All right, so we got Venom Annual Number One. So this is the first annual, I think, for Venom all year. I could be wrong, but uh, you know, you know how annuals work. They're kind of one shots. They usually don't tie into anything. This doesn't really tie anything. It's uh, it's pretty good. Not uh, not the best, but you know, that has a lot to do with how many people worked on it. So you've got. You got a, a bunch of different writers and artists and stuff. That's kind of an issue. Now, most of them were really good. One of them was really bad. At least that I, I didn't like it. And, and I'll get to that. But this is pretty much... So the story here is all these villains are hanging out. I think this is the bar with no name. That would be my guess because that's where all the villains are. And what's going on is they're all talking about Venom. Like Venom, I hear Venom's, you know, being a good dude now and... You know, he's doing all this and goes back to Venom number one. This guy got his eye ripped out and, and he ate it <laughs> when he was doing tongues and stuff. And they're all kind of just talking about how scary Venom is. That's pretty much the premise of the book. And they're telling stories. My only nitpick, though, is like they're all explaining to Scorpion, Max Gargan, why Venom is scary. And why I think that's stupid. And Donny Cates... I don't know if, if you watch this or not. You should know better because you're apparently a big Venom fan. Max Gargan was Venom for a long, well, a couple of years. So he shouldn't need to be explained to, people shouldn't need to explain to him why Venom is scary. He was Venom. Once you get past that though, and he was Venom. He wasn't the best Venom. I like Venom as Eddie Brock. I'm glad Eddie Brock is Venom again. But uh, he ended up buying the symbiote in an auction. It was really uh, it was an interesting story. But anyway, uh, yeah. Once you can look past that, because there's no other reason why he should not like he should know how scary Venom is. But um, we get three tales. One is with uh, Felicia Hardy, who, I mean, they're actually they're actually doing that. I'm, I'm surprised. Surprised. But. Uh, she fights him. So I don't know where this takes place, but this is pretty much her wanting to get revenge on uh, Venom for attacking her. This one's a pretty okay story. I didn't mind it. But what's really cool, the real, the real like star of this show is when this barkeep, when the barkeep explains his running with Venom. This one, uh, was my favorite. I thought the art was the best in it and uh, the story was the best because the whole time is a fight between him and Wolverine. This was really cool and this is what like sells the book on me. So I'll give it a recommend. I'd say it's a 3.5. It's a good solid 3.5. Uh, it's, it's almost a 4 if it wasn't for the last story which I'll get to but this was really cool, this fight between him and Wolverine, man. They, they go at it, like, uh, see this here. There was some really cool lines in it, too. He's like, oh, I bet Spider-Man's real scared of you. And he's just kind of standing up to him and fighting him. And like, look at this. This is really cool, too. He just kind of mutilates him. But Wolverine gets right back up, and they just go at it. And Wolverine pretty much says to him, like, is this all you want to be? And... He kind of just leaves Venom stunned, which I thought was really cool. He could have killed him, but he did. So I don't know if this was supposed to be like a turning a turning point in Venom's uh, life, but I thought that was really cool. The last story is Venom versus the Juggernaut. I don't like the art at all. It's an exaggerated story, obviously, because he has like these heads and it's because this is like him telling a story from years ago so he's not remembering all the details right um i didn't like the art and i thought it was boring because it's all told by this dude's perspective and look at all the dialogue it really kind of cut into the action like some some writers just want to write all over the place and like they didn't put it all over the place, but all of the word bubbles are just filled with nonsense. It's like you could have easily just really told this story without dialogue, and it would have been much better. But all of the dialogue in it just just really just distracted from the action because it's really just nonstop action. But, I mean, just all this wordy dialogue 
I mean, you don't need to shrink the print so you can put more words in it. Edit out the words so you don't have to put that like that. Just this tiny, strainy writing made it a chore. Other than that, though, um, I enjoyed the first two stories. I really enjoyed the Wolverine story a lot. That really sold the book for me, to be honest. That was a, that was a treat. It's been a long time since we've got a Wolverine story like that because he's been dead for so long, and they've been milking him for a year. But, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That, that was worth the price of admission in my, in my eyes was that Wolverine story. So that's pretty much it. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this book if you read it. Um, tell me what you think about Wolverine. Tell me what you think about that mess up with uh, Max Gargan. I know I'm going to assume most of you know that. That's pretty common knowledge. So uh, what were the editors doing is my question. Isn't that your guys' job to catch that crap? Um, you could have just not had Scorpion there and maybe had Shocker as the, uh, as the dude that was getting the stories told to him. That would have made more sense. But not explaining it to, to Scorpion. That's stupid. Other than that, it's all right. So like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, Links in the description to my Patreon and my Twitch and my Discord. Come hang out. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.